the gross and the net market borrowings through dated securities during 24-25 are estimated at 14.01 lakh crore rupees and 11.63 lakh crore rupees respectively. Both will be less than that in 23-24. The fiscal consolidation path announced by me in 2021 has served our economy very well and we aim to reach the deficit below 4.5% next year. The government is committed to staying the course. From 2026-27 onwards, our endeavour will be to keep the fiscal deficit each year such that the central government's debt will be on a declining path as percentage of GDP. I will now move to part B. Indirect taxes. Sir, I start with GST. It has decreased tax incidence on the common man, reduced compliance burden and logistics cost for trade and industry, and enhanced revenues of the central and the state governments. It is a success of vast proportions. To multiply the benefits of GST, we will strive to further simplify and rationalize the tax structure and endeavor to expand it to the remaining sectors. My proposals for custom duties, my proposals for customs duties intend to support domestic manufacturing, deepen local value addition, promote export competitiveness, and simplify taxation while keeping the interest of the general public and consumers surmount. In Budget 22-23, we reduced the number of customs duty rates. I propose to undertake a comprehensive review of the rate structure over the next six months to rationalize and simplify it for ease of trade, removal of duty inversion, and reduction of disputes. I shall now take up sector-specific customs duty proposals. Medicine and medical equipments. To provide relief to cancer patients, I propose to fully exempt three more medicines from customs duties. I also propose changes in the BCD on X-ray tubes and flat panel detectors for use in medical X-ray machines under the phased manufacturing program so as to synchronize them with the domestic capacity addition. Mobile phone and related parts. With a threefold increase in domestic production and almost a hundredfold jump in exports of mobile phones over the last six years, the Indian mobile industry has matured. In the interest of consumers, I now propose to reduce the BCD on mobile phone, mobile PCBA, and mobile charger to 15%. Critical minerals. Minerals such as lithium, copper, cobalt, and rare earth elements are critical for sectors like nuclear energy, renewable energy, space, defense, telecommunications, and high-tech electronics. I propose to fully exempt customs duties on 25 critical minerals and reduce BCD on two of them. This will provide a major fillip to the processing and refining of such minerals and help secure their availability for these strategic and important sectors. Solar energy. Energy transition is critical in the fight against climate change. To support energy transition, I propose to expand the list of exempted capital goods for use in the manufacture of solar cells and panels in the country. Further, in view of sufficient domestic manufacturing capacity of solar gas, glass, and tinned copper interconnect, I propose not to extend the exemption of custom duties provided to them. Marine products. 
India's seafood exports in the last financial year touched an all-time high of more than 60,000 crores of rupees. Frozen shrimp accounted for about two-thirds of these exports. To enhance their comp competitiveness, I propose to reduce BCD on certain brood stock, polychaete worms, shrimp and fish feed to 5%. I also propose to exempt customs duty on various inputs for manufacture of shrimp and fish feed, leather and textile. Similarly, to enhance the competitiveness of exports in the leather and textile sectors, I propose to reduce BCD on real down filling material from duck or goose. I am also making additions to the list of exempted goods for manufacture of leather and textile garments, footwear and other leather articles for export. To rectify inversion in duty, I propose to reduce BCD subject to conditions on methylene diphenyl diisocyanate MDI for manufacture of spandex yarn from 7.5 to 5%. Furthermore, the export duty structure on raw hides, skin and leather is proposed to be simplified and rationalized. Precious metals. To enhance domestic value addition in gold and precious metal jewelry in the country, I propose to reduce customs duties on gold and silver to 6% and that of platinum to 6.4%. Other metals, steel and copper are important raw materials. To reduce the cost of production, I propose to remove the BCD on ferro-nickel and blister copper. I am also continuing with nil BCD on ferrous scrap and nickel cathode and concessional BCD of 2.5% on copper scrap. Electronics. To increase value addition in the domestic electronics industry, I propose to remove the BCD subject to conditions on oxygen-free copper for manufacture of resistors. I also propose to exempt certain parts for manufacture of connectors. Chemicals and petrochemicals. To support existing and new capacities in the pipeline, I propose to increase the BCD on ammonium nitrate from 7.5% to 10%. Plastics, PVC flex banners are bio, non-biodegradable and hazardous for environment and health. To curb their imports, I propose to raise the BCD on them from 10 to 25%. Telecommunication equipment, to incentivize domestic manufacturing, I propose to increase the BCD from 10 to 15 percent on PCBA of specific, specified telecom equipment. Trade facilitation to promote domestic aviation and boat and ship MRO, I propose to extend the period of ex period for export of goods imported for repairs from six months to one year. I'll read that again to promote domestic aviation and boat and ship maintenance, repair and operations. I propose to extend the period for export of goods imported for repairs from six months to one year. In the same vein, I propose to extend the time limit for re-import of goods for repairs under warranty from three to five years. I now move to direct taxes. We will continue our efforts to simplify taxes, taxes, improve taxpayer services, provide tax certainty, and reduce litigation while enhancing revenues for funding the development and welfare schemes of the government. It, is, it has been our endeavor to simplify taxation. We have taken a number of measures in the last few years, including introduction of simplified tax regimes without exemptions and deductions for corporate tax and for personal income tax. This has been appreciated by taxpayers. 
58% of corporate tax came from the simplified tax regime in the financial year 22-23. Similarly, as per data available till now, for the last fiscal, more than two-thirds have availed the new personal income tax regime. Comprehensive review of the Income Tax Act. I am now announcing a comprehensive review of the Income Tax Act 1961. The purpose is to make the Act concise, lucid, easy to read and understand. This will reduce disputes and litigation, thereby providing tax certainty to the taxpayers. I will also bring down the demand embroiled in litigation. It is proposed to be completed in six months. A beginning is being made in the finance bill by simplifying the tax regime for charities, tedious rate structures, provisions of reassessment and search provisions, and capital gains taxation. Simplification for charities and tedious. Two tax exemption regimes. The two tax exemption regimes for charities are proposed to be merged into one. The 5% tedious rate on many payments is being merged into the 2% tedious rate and the 20% tedious rate on repurchase of units by mutual funds or UTI is being withdrawn. Tedious rate on e-commerce operators is proposed to be reduced from 1 to 0.1%. Moreover, credit of TCS is proposed to be given in the TDS to be deducted on salary. Further, I propose to decriminalize delay for payment of TDS up to the due date of filing statement for the same. I also plan to provide a standard operating procedure for TDS defaults and simplify and rationalize the compounding guidelines for such defaults. Simplification of reassessment. I propose to thoroughly simplify the provisions for reopening and reassessment. An assessment here and after can be reopened beyond three years from the end of the assessment year only if the escaped income is 50 lakh rupees or more up to a maximum period of five years from the end of the assessment year. Even in search cases, a time limit of six years before the year of the search as against the existing time limit of 10 years is being proposed. This will reduce tax uncertainty and disputes. Simplification and rationalization of capital gains. Capital gains taxation is also proposed to be hugely simplified. Short-term gains on certain financial assets shall henceforth attract a tax rate of 20%, while that on all other financial assets and all non-financial assets shall continue to attract the applicable tax rate. Long-term gains on all financial and non-financial assets, on the other hand, will attract a tax rate of 12.5%. For the benefit of the lower and the middle income classes, I propose, the, I propose to increase the limit of exemption of capital gains on certain financial assets to 1.25 lakh rupees per year. Listed financial assets held for more than a year will be classified as long-term, while unlisted financial assets and all non-financial assets will have to be held for at least two years to be classified as long-term. Unlisted bonds and debentures, debt mutual funds, and market-linked debentures, irrespective of holding period, however, will attract tax on capital gains at applicable rates. Taxpayer services. All the major taxpayer services under GST and most services under customs and income tax have been digitalized. 
all remaining services of customs and income tax, including rectification and order giving effect to appellate orders, shall be digitalized and made paperless over the next two years. Litigation and appeals. While our concerted efforts to reduce pendency of appeals at various